Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün İngiltere'nin en gözde üniversitelerinden Goldsmith University of London'da eğitimi Jake'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı Questions bölümünden sormayı unutmayın. Yes, Jake, the stage is yours now. Perfect, thank you. And thank you everyone for, for joining us today, joining me today, um, as I present Goldsmiths and your options to study in the UK. I'm just going to quickly share my screen so you can see my presentation. Um, whilst I'm getting ready, um, firstly on the screen here you can see my name, so Jake Longley, I'm the International Recruitment Officer at Goldsmiths and I help students from Turkey to come and study at Goldsmiths University of London. On the screen now you can see my email address and my mobile telephone number. I've also put this already into the chat window, so you've got my contact details there, you can copy them out and save them. So if you have any questions about studying at Goldsmiths or life in London, feel free to contact me. I've also in the chat window put some links that may be useful, so things on how to find our courses, information on accommodation and scholarships, things like this. So the links that I'm going to cover today in the presentation are already in the chat window for you. Also, if you would like to receive further information from Goldsmiths, I've put in a link to a form you can complete where you leave your name, your email address, things like this. So that's there if you would like to receive information from us. But let's get started. So I've got some quick facts about Goldsmiths and London. So firstly, Goldsmiths was founded in 1891 and we've been part of the University of London since 1904. We're a single site campus in the heart of Southeast London. Quite a lot of universities in London have their campuses spread out across London, but all of our buildings, all the places you need to learn from are all in one place in Southeast London. We have over 10,000 students from 140 countries around the world, and we're considered one of the UK's top creative and political universities. We're quite a forward-thinking university as well in a lot of things that we do, but a good example of this is the Green New Deal that Goldsmith has implemented, which is where we're committed to becoming a carbon neutral organization by 2025. Our university has a focus on creative arts, entrepreneurial business, computing, psychology, social sciences, and humanities. And in the areas that we teach, we've produced quite a lot of influential alumni who have gone on to do some quite amazing things, both in their careers and in terms of becoming famous and top of their industries as well. So let's keep going. So in London, um, we have uh, London itself. Some of you may have been there. Some of you um, may know it from films and TV, but we're quite a large city with 620 square miles and we have 9 million inhabitants. We're obviously not the most popular city in the world. Places like Tokyo and Seoul and Sao Paulo are much larger and much more inhabited, but we're, we're still quite a large city. We have over 250 museums. And we actually have 320 languages spoken by over 240 different nationalities in our city. We've got over 6,000 licensed restaurants that sell food from all around the world. A good thing that you can do when you first arrive in London is write down the alphabet down one side of, pay, of a piece of paper and then think of a country for each letter you write down. And I can guarantee you can find a restaurant for almost every style of food you can think of. London itself is really popular for both students and tourists. We have over 500,000 students studying in the city at any one time. And about 300,000 of these, maybe 250,000 of these, study at the University of London. Um, we have over 22 million visitors, 22 million tourists that come and visit annually. And this is more than New York, San Francisco and Sydney combined. We've got over 500 cinema screens. We have 32,000 live music performances each year. And this includes about 250 different music festivals in the city of London alone. Now this caters for all types of music from hip hop to rock music, dance music to metal, but also we have an Indian music festival, an Italian music festival, a Chinese music festival. The list just goes on and on. We have over 100 theatres. We obviously have our famed West End, which is where a lot of the large, um, the world's largest uh, theatre productions are. Um, the West End is on par with Broadway in New York. We've got five international airports that are outside the city, all take between 30 minutes and maybe one hour, one and a half hours to get to. And you can travel to anywhere in the world from these airports. We've got over 3,000 parks. We're actually um, Europe's greenest city for the number of parks we have. So if you're like me, like maybe you're like, I come from the countryside in England, so I'm used to peace and quiet, but maybe you want some peace and quiet regardless of where you're from, just away from the noise of the city. There's always a park in every area of London that you can go to to find that calm and just reset before you go back to the busyness. 
London is also synonymous with sports. We've hosted the Olympic Games in 2012 and also the European Championships. A lot of that was uh, here this summer. But a good example is football. We've got 19 professional football clubs and I think about six or seven in the Premier League, one of the world's largest, most popular football leagues. And also London has got over 2,000 years of history. It's a beautifully old city, lots of um, lots of different things to explore and discover, dating from all periods of history. But then also the future that London holds as well. It's got a really bright future. The amount of industries and opportunities that are here, it's a really great place to be. So this map here is central London itself. It's, uh, it's not all of London, it's just literally the center. So where you can see all the pink icons to the sort of maybe the top left is uh, of this map is the city center. So you can see things like Buckingham Palace where the queen lives, Big Ben, which is where our houses of parliament are, where the government is. In the middle of the map, there's the Tate Modern, which is one of our largest modern art galleries, one of the world's most famous galleries as well. Just to the right of that is Shakespeare's Globe, which is a reconstruction of the original William Shakespeare the theatre. It's actually very close to where the original used to be and it's an almost perfect um, uh, re uh, recreation of the theatre as well. So then just to the right of that you've then got a tall needle looking building called the Shard. Um, this is where a train station called London Bridge is. So if you follow um, from London Bridge down to the bottom right where the orange um, <clears throat> icon is, it's where it says Goldsmiths Campus, that is where we are. We're in an area called New Cross in southeast London. Like it says on this map, it takes nine minutes to get um, from New Cross or New Cross Gate train stations where we are to where London Bridge is. Depending on what train you get, you can also get there in about five minutes. But even though we're outside the city centre, this map shows how easy it is to get from anywhere, get from our campus to anywhere in the city. If you look um, near the top left of the map, it says Oxford Circus. This is the center of our main busy shopping street where all the big shops are. There's a H&M and Nike Town. Like it says there, there's a place called Selfridges, which is a uh, very big, very famous department store. So to get from our campus at the bottom right to Selfridges at the top left, it's going to take you about 27 minutes. It's really easy to do, really quick to do by public transport. And it's just really, um, like I said, it's really easy to get around London, even though we're outside the city center, it's really easy to get there. So like I said earlier, we're a single campus university. So what I mean by this is every building you need to learn to, uh, you need to use to learn and to study in, all the workshops and the facilities are all in one place. Like I said earlier, some universities in London have their buildings to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. We're all in one place. On this map at the bottom, there's a very thin orange line is that's circulating around our campus. So like I said before, every building you need is just here. So your lecture theatres, the labs, the different art and design and media facilities. So that includes um, different print and textile workshops and uh, fine art and painting studios and woodwork and uh, metalwork studios, but then also radio, TV, film and production studios, music studios, all different things like this. They're all in there. Also our library, that's there. The bottom left, you can see some tennis courts. We have tennis courts on our campus as well. Uh, but it's all right here. And you can see the city of London in the distance there and see just how close we are to it. If you wanted a walk, it'll take you maybe about an hour, hour and a half, depending on how fast you are. And it's quite a nice walk sometimes as well, if you Get a, get a good day with the weather. But like I said earlier, five to 10 minutes by train and you'll be right there. You can also see on this map, we have some accommodation that's nearby. We've got one set of halls actually on the campus. Um, and then we have one, two, three, just opposite the campus over the road. So these are all very close, take you literally two to three minutes to get from your hall to the campus. There are three then also signposted by arrows that are actually just outside this photograph. So the one at the top right is just the other side of the river on the north side of the river, but it still only takes about 15 to 20 minutes by train to get to our campus from there. The one at the bottom right is just off the map. It's literally a excuse me, a five minute walk. And the one on the top left, again, is just pointing off the map, is about a 10 minute, 15 minute bus ride. But it's super easy. It's one road about six, seven stops maybe, very easily done. And you'll get very much into the swing of how public transport and things like this work in the city as soon as you get here. So like I said earlier, we're at the bottom right of this map in New Cross in Southeast London. So Southeast London itself is a dynamic, urban, multicultural part of London. You get a real experience of London life here. It's a very residential area. There are lots of shops and businesses around, but it's not like the city centre where there's just businesses. No one really lives in the city centre. It's just shops and businesses and things like this. 
In Southeast London, where we are in New Cross, you have this real experience of proper London life. There's the residential uh, aspect of the community. There's the community that already lives there and there's the student community as well. And these uh, combine really nicely. It's a really lovely place to be. Like I said quite a few times, we're close to the city centre. It's five to 10 minutes from London, uh, uh, from London Bridge by train. We've got some really excellent transport links. We have the train, we have another train called the Overground. Um, and then we also have the bus network as well, which is really easy to use. Like I talked about earlier, London has some really amazing green spaces and New Cross also has these as well. There's a really beautiful park just next to our campus called Telegraph Hill. As you can imagine from its name, it's up on a hill and has really amazing views of central London from them. So any day where the sun's out, where you just want some peace and calm, uh, peace and quiet, in fact, um, you can go to the top of this hill and see the city. It's a really great place to be. Our area as well, like I said earlier, includes lots of shops and bars and restaurants. Um, there is lots of activity in the area, some really wonderful art galleries and music venues. And like I said, shops and bars and things like this as well. There's lots of things to do in our area, even before you get into the city center. So I talked a little bit earlier about the accommodation, just pointing out where it is and on location, uh, where, where the locations are on the map, which should give you a bit more idea about what we have to offer. So we have 1400 rooms across seven halls of residences. These all have 24 hour security, campus support officers, and also residence experience co coordinators as well. So these are people who are here to protect you, off, uh, answer any questions you have, but also offer you advice on things to do in the area and what you can do. For all international students, which is what we would include people from Turkey to be, we'll guarantee you a room in our accommodation for your first year studying with us. Quite often the accommodation is in a flat or maybe an apartment, which you share with other people. You'll always have your own private bedroom um, and most of our rooms now have their own private bathroom. But what this flat means is you'll share the kitchen and the communal area with maybe four to five other people. So like I said, you have your own private bedroom, which has a lock on the door. Most of our accommodation has private bathrooms now as well, but then you share the kitchen and the communal area. So you have a chance to meet new people and like hang out and like make friends in your apartment. And then you will have friends on your course as well. So it's a great chance to meet new people. All the halls have access to coin or phone operated laundry facilities so you can make sure all your, clean, uh, your clothes and your bed sheets are clean and fresh. But then also some of the um, accommodation has uh, other facilities which I'll explain in a second. Applications for the accommodation open in April of each year and close in July of each year. So I've included the dates April 2022 and July 2022 if you're applying to study with us in September 2022. To be able to apply for accommodation, you have to first apply for your program and have an offer. Then you can apply for accommodation later, but this happens much later in the year, so we can talk about it properly then as well. The price of the halls range from about 600 to 880, 880 pounds per month. This price includes all your utility bills, so internet, electricity, water, and gas, if that's how the place is heated and powered. Um, you have to um, clean the cumulator. Oh, no, we cover cleaning of the cumulators, in fact. There's cleaning teams that come around and look after your kitchen and things like this. However, you should obviously do your bit and wash your dishes and keep the place um, tidy. We'll include basic possessions insurance. So if you're coming with simple things like a laptop and your clothes, that's covered. But if you're bringing any specialist equipment, maybe like a camera or music equipment or something like this, you may want to consider taking out extra insurance just to make sure you're covered if anything does happen. We do include some bedding and basic kitchen supplies, but you will have to get some other things yourself. So like your bed sheets, you'll have to get, um, if you want any um, you know, more extravagant kitchen supplies, you'll have to get those as well. Um, we can offer um, information on companies that can send this um, for you. This is already there at your apartment before you arrive, but there are lots of shops in the area as well where you can get this. But like I said earlier, much with like applying for the place, we can go over this in further detail later on when you're ready to, you know, to apply for accommodation. Some of the um, halls also have different facilities. I talked a little bit about this a minute ago. So some of the halls have quite big study areas. So in one of the photos, this photo at the top right on this previous slide, you can see this area. This is actually, this is not one of the apartments. This is just a communal area in the building. So there's table tennis, there's chairs and sofas to hang out with, different tables and things like this. So if it's quiet, you can study there, but you can also meet people from the other halls. Some of the other halls as well also have their own gyms. Um, so please, when you go through the accommodation, carefully look and see which facilities are provided and what are there to see also what you want from there as well. For all UK universities, 
well, in fact, most, let's go back a step. For most UK universities, and Goldsmith is one of them, we don't do meal plans. So this means you have to buy your own groceries and do your own cooking. You sometimes find places that do uh, meal plans. It's quite an American thing to do as well. But the UK, mostly we don't do this and Goldsmiths don't. This is your time to get out there, do your own groceries and do your cooking. It'll be fine. We'll get through it. It'll, it'll be okay. Other things to think about, you may not want to use our accommodation. You don't have to use our accommodation, but we can help you with private accommodation as well. So the first thing is the University of London, uh, the housing service. So like I said earlier, we're part of the University of London. I didn't really explain this earlier, but I'll try and explain it briefly now. The University of London is a federation of 17 different universities. This includes UCL, King's College London, London School of Economics, lots of prestigious schools like this, and Goldsmiths is part of this. As being part of this, you get to use the facilities and the services the University of London has. So one thing is the University of London housing service that we have um, this service where you can look for different private accommodation around London, but also look at different halls that the universities have as well. So we have the University of London intercollegiate halls. So these are nine halls of residences around London that allow students from all the University of London universities to stay there. So you may not want to be at a goldsmith's accommodation, or maybe you apply too late and the, there's no rooms left, something like this. You can apply to the University of London intercollegiate halls and find very similar accommodation to the goldsmith's accommodation, but just has students from other universities as well, not just goldsmith students. You can also use the private housing guide, which is really good advice on how the contracts work and how to find somewhere. And then we also have our own Facebook group, um, the Goldsmith Student Union Housing Facebook group. So it's just for Goldsmith students. These are people who are looking to find maybe flatmates to go and find somewhere to live, or maybe they have a room that they're renting out and they want someone to come and take it. Lots of different options like this. But once you've applied, once you've got an offer, we'll let you join this group and then we can go through that with you. So... Now onto the things that you can do at university apart from find accommodation. Um, every UK university has what's called a student union and the student unions include these things called clubs, societies and sports groups. These are led by students and they're set up by students who are looking to find other students who have a very similar interest to them. So we have over 100 student groups and 20 sports clubs at our university. And these range from politics to faith-based groups, artistic, multicultural, academic societies, and obviously sports clubs. We have 21 different sports clubs from soccer to rugby, basketball and cheerleading and dance and all things in between. And also um, our teams compete in the uh, compete, sorry, in the London University Sports League. Got some examples of the societies and clubs you can join this is just a few examples this isn't all of them there are lots of different ones so we have the smiths magazine so anyone who is thinking about being a journalist either just as an interest or as a career choice you can go and join this magazine and write articles even photographers and graphic designers you're needed as well we have an lgbtq plus students community this is like a help group but also a support group like but also to find friends, it's all there for you. Hack Smiths, our Goldsmith Tech Society. These are students who are super interested in learning how software works and building their own software. You don't have to be on the computing programs. You can just go and join this if that's your interest. This applies to all the groups. An example of like a faith group, we have our Islamic society, but we also have Christian society and a Jewish society, all different faith groups. We have a veg, uh, um, vegetarian and vegan society, photography, taekwondo, yoga. Um, like I said earlier, we have different sports clubs and our women's football team is actually one of the best football teams in London. So if the women here are thinking about playing football, here's a great team to come and join. It'll be really good fun. And also you'll be competing with some really amazing players in a really great league. An example that's not on this list, though, so these some of these groups can be quite serious in what they do, but we have some really fun ones, uh, fun groups as well. An example is our Chocolate Society. So these are people who just really love chocolate. They love sharing it from all around the world. So they get together once a month, once every couple of weeks and share chocolate they found and have a good chat. So you can join stuff maybe to do with your career, maybe a support group, maybe um, things you're just interested in. But you can also join these just to go and have fun, meet new people, meet people outside your accommodation and outside your class and just enjoy your time at university and in London. So I've talked a lot about 
where we are, a little bit about our accommodation and things you can do on the campus in our societies. But here's actually what we do. We have about 18 departments at the university and we teach, like I said earlier, so art, design, humanities and social sciences. So we teach things, like I said, like art, design and media, but then business and management, politics and international relations, psychology, sociology, anthropology, this kind of area. We're quite good at what we do as well. The 18 departments we have, a lot of them are considered in, uh, to be inside the world's elite. So departments like anthropology, art design, communication and media, the list kind of goes on and on with what we do. We have some really amazing academics at our uh, university who are there to teach you and support you. And then the support teams around them as well are brilliant. As an example of this, um, our art um, department, um, I think every single one of our academics has been nominated for the arts uh, turn of the Turner Arts Prize in the UK. The Turner Arts Prize is the biggest prize in the UK. So every single one of our academics has been nominated for that, um, which is an amazing achievement. So to then be a student studying with them, you get some really, really amazing tuition and experience just being uh, passed down to you. It's quite similar in all of our other departments. Our academics have really highly thought of for the research they've done, the work they've done in their fields. So to be part of that is going to be quite an amazing experience. To go along with this, I've got some rankings here for you. Um, so firstly, um, sorry, I actually didn't update the date on this, the, the first one, there's a mistake I've made. So we're number three in the UK for design and art. We were actually number four in 2020, so we've gone up a place in 2021. So we are number three in the UK for design and art 2021. I've missed changing that date. The next set of figures, so these all say 2014. So what this is, this research excellent framework, uh, excellence framework, this is done every few years. So the last time this was done was 2014. One is being completed at the moment, but the results are not out yet. So you may think these results are kind of out of date, but we'll, we sort of, you're allowed to use them for the years that you have them. We'll find out what the new results are soon. But according to when this was last done, we're number three in the UK for psychology for research intensity. Number one in the UK for computer science, again, research intensity. Number one in the UK for music. Uh, and also number one for business and management. And then number two in the UK for economics. This is all research intensity. Now, obviously, I'm sort of, uh, today I'm expecting a lot of undergrad students who are looking to study bachelor's degrees. The research that um, we're sort of marked on here is stuff that we do at postgraduate level, so PhDs and master's levels. You may be thinking, what's this got to do with me? I'm going to study a bachelor's degree. However, the research that we conduct and we complete then gets taught on the undergraduate degrees. So these rankings here and the information that we've got from this is really quite important for what you go on to study. So like I said, we're considered number one in the UK for business and management research intensity. So anyone thinking of studying a business and management undergrad with us, a bachelor's degree, you're in really good hands. And this applies to almost every department we have as well. Some easier metrics that we've got, and these are all up to date. So number 12 in the world for media, all from 2021, number 15 for art and design, 39 in the world for sociology, 41st in the world for anthropology, 42nd for performing arts, and we're 101 in the world for psychology. And we're rated a five-star institution by the QS Intelligence Unit. So the QS Intelligence Unit are the same people who are the QS World Universities rankings as well. So um, for the people who are thinking about studying undergraduate programs, I've picked out some uh, programs that have been really popular with students in Turkey, um, mainly what people apply for with us. Obviously, you don't have to stick to these programs, just some examples to think about. So we are mostly famous for BA Design and BA Fine Art, our big design and fine art programs. Also programs like Management with Entrepreneurship. This is a really popular course. This is a business degree, which where we also teach how to run and start your own business. We also teach management in a few other ways as well. So we teach it with marketing and with economics. So you've got a few different options depending on which way you want to go. We have a BA Media and Communications program. Again, a hugely popular program for what we do. And inside this area, this program is 50% practical and 50% theory. And we teach everything from TV, radio and film through to um, illustration, journalism and sort of web animation and different things like this. You can pick different pathways depending on what you want to do and then also combine that with a the theory side of the program. So you're understanding how to make media and communications productions, but also why we make them and what ethical and sort of challenging issues come up as well. Finally, just an example, we have our BSc psychology program, which is a really popular program. There are a few other programs we have in psychology as well. So we do that with um, psychology and um, I think it's cognitive neuroscience as well, as an example. Uh, but there are a few other psychology programs that are worth looking at. However, like I said, these are the ones that are mainly popular with students in Turkey. You may be 
be thinking different from these programs. If you've got any questions about these, obviously feel free to contact me and we can go over the program and what maybe your options are. Some information for you here, um, just some basic administration. So for the applications for the undergraduate programs, we use a system called UCAS. This is a system used by all UK universities and it allows you to apply for up to five programs at five different universities. The deadline for applications for students from the UK is the 29th of January 2022. So it's coming up. For international students, which is what you are, the deadline is actually the 30th of June 2022. However, I would recommend applying by that first deadline if you can, just because the programs do get full. It's also good to get an idea of, you know, you've got an offer, you've got that sorted early, and then you can just focus on the rest of the year, slowly making your plans to come to the UK. Obviously, plans change, things come up. So if you do apply later than that deadline, don't worry, we're here to help and we can help get things sorted very quickly for you. It's not a problem. The big thing with us when you apply to a program is your personal statements. So thinking about what you've got to say for yourself and why you've chosen the courses you have. At Goldsmiths, we really want to know, like I just said, why you've chosen that course. But we also want to know anything you've got to tell us about yourself. So maybe any extracurricular activities outside of school, maybe playing in the football team or playing in a band or something like this, or any work experience you've got or any volunteering experience you've got. But remember, only tell us these things if they're related to the program you want to study. An example could be if you want to study business and management and maybe you're playing in the football team, you could say, I played in the football team at school. I learned leaderships from this, uh, from playing in the football team and I can use this on this business and management degree in this way. And then you give us an example, something like that. That is how you would make it related or relevant towards what you want to do. For programs like art and design and maybe our journalism program, we need a portfolio. This is really easy to do. We just ask you to send us a PDF for, for journalism. We need to see some examples of your writing. Um, I've got information in the links. I think I put it up, um, but I can send information around later as well. Um, and also there's lots of information on our website on what we need to do from a portfolio. When you apply, you fill in the application first and then we ask for the portfolio later. So don't worry if you've not got it sorted now, we can go through this later. There's some codes on the screen now as well, Your UCAS, uh, the UCAS Insti Insti institution code and the institution name. However, when you apply, this is on the screen, this will come up on UCAS. If you've got any problems, feel free to ask me and I'll be able to help you with these. Some information for you as well with scholarships. We do offer scholarships, um, excuse me. So we have the Goldsmiths International Scholarship. So this year we're offering um, a number of 2,000, in fact, 2,000, 4,000 and 5,000 pound scholarships to international students who have an offer to uh, study full time with us. Sorry, I've missed a date that it says 2021 again, where it's also 2022, so September 2022. This is for international fee paying students. That's you, uh, you in Turkey. We have two deadlines for this. So don't worry if you don't make the first deadline. The first deadline is the 31st of March. The second deadline is the 17th of May. So if you don't make that first deadline to apply, don't worry, still apply. The second deadline is the 17th of May. Make sure you apply by then. What we need to do for this, firstly, you need to apply for a program to study at Goldsmiths. Second, you need to have an offer from us saying Goldsmiths want you to study here on this program. Once you've got that, we'll send you information on the scholarship and how to apply. The basic thing that we ask for you is a second personal statement. It's a little bit similar to the first one you'd have written to apply for the program. So you have to say why you've chosen this course at this university. But what we want to hear from you is any work experience you have, any volunteering experience you have. These two are super important. And the final thing we want to hear about is what you choose to do for your career and then how it's going to help other people. The people who always get the scholarship are always the people who say how their career is going to benefit other people. A big, big thing about Goldsmiths and what we do is making sure that whatever job we have, whatever career we have, that we're always making sure that the people who come behind us can get the opportunities we did as, did as well. So if you want to come and study Goldsmiths and be a world famous fashion designer, or if you want to be a teacher in a school that's not famous at all, either one, we value these just as highly as the other. We want to make sure that you're constantly thinking about how can you help those people that are before you and after you, and what can you do to benefit society? So you want to hear about that in the personal statement for the scholarship. And like I said earlier, the people who talk about that are normally the ones who get the scholarship. So make sure you have this in mind. And also I appreciate a lot of the people who are on this call now are thinking about undergraduate study 
you're going to be quite young. You're going to be 16, 17. Maybe you haven't got any work experience yet. Maybe you haven't got any volunteering experience yet. So maybe think about spending some time, if you've got it, outside your studies now, getting that experience so you can then talk about it when you apply for things like this. So when you study with us as well, some final bits and pieces for you. So when you study with us as well, um, we have lots of amazing services um, that are there to support you. So our Immigration Advisory Service, one of the best in the UK. So these guys help you get your CAS and your visa to come and study in the UK. And then when you're here, they look after you as well to make sure you're inside the immigration rules. Like I said, we're one of the best in the UK for this, and we work to a 0% rejection rate. So that means if we give you a CAS number, which you need to apply for the visa, we know that you'll get that visa, you will not be rejected. We have a well, uh, an amazing um, well-being team and our disability support service as well. They're there to make sure you're okay in all regards. So your mental health, your physical health, and any support you may need whilst you study with us. We have campus support officers and student advisors. These are people who can give you basic information like where things are and what to do through to quite complex information about how to maybe finish a piece of work or which department to speak to to get something, different things like this. We have our multi-faith chaplaincy for people of all religions and non-religion, if you want to go and speak to someone about spiritual matters. We have our students' union, who I talked about earlier in terms of the clubs and societies, but they're also there to protect you as well. So if you've got any problems that you may need some advice about, you can speak to them. We have some quite amazing student networks. So our LGBTQ plus group, we have black and minority ethnic groups, trans and non-binary groups, disabled support groups, and also an international student support group as well. When you first arrive with us, arrive with us, we have our welcome week, which is where we spend a week with just the international students on the campus. And you get to see the place on its own before anyone else arrives and just start to get to grips with it and understand how it works before it gets really chaotic and busy and everyone arrives. Finally, we have also our global opportunities team. So these are the people, if you ever want to go study in another country, maybe for a semester or maybe a full year, go and speak to them and they can help and show you where you can go in the world to study something that's related to what you're already doing at Goldsmiths. Really onto the final bits of information here for you as well. So obviously coronavirus is an ongoing situation. Goldsmiths at all times, um, we have to respond to this sort of fluid, ever-changing situation. It changes day to day, but we keep up to date with what the UK government um, sets as the rules and also what Public Health England, who are the body responsible for public health in England, we respond to what they do as well. We make sure that we're keeping our students safe and um, secure. So on campus at the moment, we expect people to wear masks, You've got to uh, follow a one-way system around the university. So if you walk down the corridor the wrong way, you have to turn around and go the other way. Or if you've missed your direction, you've got to go all the way around to come back, things like this. There's hand sanitizers everywhere. Um, any large lectures that we teach where there's going to be a lot of people in the room, at the moment, we're pre-recording these and putting these online to help keep the students safe. But any smaller lectures, any smaller workshops, these are on campus, so you still get that. Uh, in-person teaching and the experience of speaking with the tutors and the lecturers as well as your classmates as well. We have some links here. Um, also, if you go onto the Goldsmiths website and type in coronavirus, you can find out lots of information about what we're doing, what your options are, and also the number of cases that we have and things like this as well. All the information is there for you. Okay, final things to think about. So like I said earlier, we're part of the University of London. Obviously, I didn't explain it too well at the start, but being part of this means we're part of this amazing network. We've gone on to do some really amazing things. People that we've taught at the University of London have uh, gone on to become presidents and prime ministers, 55 of them, in fact. We've taught 84 Nobel laureates and six Grammy winners, to name just a few. We've also taught people like Steve McQueen. So he studied directly at Goldsmiths. He's the first black director to win a Best Picture Oscar at the um, Hollywood Oscar Awards. He won in 2012, I think it was, and he won for his film uh, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, Steve McQueen studied, um, I believe it was fine arts with us. We also have people um, like James Blake, the gentleman on the left, who's um, he's a famous musician right now. He actually performed in Hollywood the other night. I follow him on Instagram and he played a big show in Hollywood. He's won big prizes like the Mercury Prize and the Ivan Novello Award. Two people on the right, uh, Mary Quant and Margaret Howell, are world famous fashion designers. Mary Quant was a fashion designer back in the 60s and 70s. You may not know her name, but she's one of the first people to design and make popular the mini skirt. So something that is a very common piece of clothing today, she's the person responsible for it. 
Um, the people at the top, we, so we teach, obviously, um, we teach English and creative writing. So people like Evie Wilde, John, Hoff, uh, John Harvey, and Ross Raisin uh, have gone to become award-winning novelists after coming through our programs. And then the three gentlemen at the bottom, Simon Hale, Adrian Sutton, and Paul Englishby. So these have become BAFTA, Olivier, and Emmy, and Tony award-winning composers. So they studied music and also performing arts with us. And then finally, as well, still related to music, um, it's all creative arts, but people like Rob Stringer, who's the chair of the Sony Music Group in America, but also Terry Felgate, the gentleman at the bottom left, he's the former managing director of EMI Records. EMI Records, I think they're still going, but they were a huge record label that had bands like Queen and Radiohead. So it's quite a big deal. So these gentlemen studied um, business with us. We have also taught um, seven winners of the Turner Arts Prize. So I talked about earlier, um, every one of our fine arts academics have been nominated for the prize. Well, we've taught seven winners. But then the people that we're sort of super proud of are the 336 psychologists, the 487 social workers, the 882 designers, the 7,308 teachers, and the 1,840 historians, and the many more students that come through us and have graduated from us. These all come together to make one Goldsmiths and one network, which you can be part of, and we couldn't be happier for you to come and be part of it. So I want to say thank you so much for coming today. Um, here's my contact details again on the screen. Like I said earlier, they're in the chat window, so there may be more messages in there. If you scroll to the top, you'll see them. I've put some links in there as well, um, things to do on our website and also a link to our YouTube page where you can find lots of really amazing videos that um, our students have also made. So you actually hear them talking about life at the university and life in London as well. On the left here, some other links you may want. Um, so like maybe having a look at our Twitter, our Instagram or our Facebook page. There's quite an active community on all of them. So feel free to go and look and get involved. Um, but like I said at the very start, my name's Jake and I'm the International Student Recruitment Officer responsible um, for helping students from Turkey to come and study with us. So feel free to contact me. You've got my email address and also my work mobile phone number. Um, so please um, feel free to message me on WhatsApp or Telegram or anything like this or email me if you've got any questions and I'll be happy to help. Um, so thank you for joining. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, and then I think we may have some questions um, to go through. Again, so the first question uh, we've got, um, so can we rent a flat out of campus and what are the rent costs approximately? So when you apply for accommodation to study at Goldsmiths, let's go back a step. When you're thinking about accommodation, when you study at Goldsmiths, you can either take the accommodation that we have, you can apply for that and we'll guarantee you a room there, but you can take any accommodation you like. You can go private, you don't have to use ours. An average price in the UK for a room in a flat is about £650 per month, and this is before bills. So you have to pay electricity, water, and gas. Those can come to about maybe £100 a month, depending on how much you're using. Um, so you start thinking about £750 per month as like an average when you include the bills. Goldsmith accommodation is around this price with the bills included. Our cheapest is about £600 per month. Our most expensive is about £880 per month. But if you're thinking about going private, doing your own thing, £650 to £750 is a fairly average amount. Um, obviously, much like any housing market in the world, the more you pay, the better you'll get. But please be careful. Um, if you start paying too much, you may not be getting what you're expecting. So please feel free to speak to our accommodation team um, and we'll be happy to go through your private accommodation options with you. Just because you're choosing to stay out of our accommodation doesn't mean that we're not going to help you. We'll still help you and make sure that you're safe and secure and your money's safe and secure as well. So the next question, can international students start the first year without a foundation year? Is it compulsory for all Turkish students with bachelor's degrees? So this is a great question, actually. There's um, four... Um, at least four Turkish qualifications we accept, which if you score a high enough mark, it's usually about 75% or 80%, you don't need to take a foundation to be able to start an undergraduate bachelor's degree. If you score less than this, you probably will have to take a foundation, but please feel free to contact me with what your qualifications are, and we can go through this and work out what your options are. If you're taking anything like the A-levels, maybe a British international school or the international baccalaureate, uh, international school or um, you've got all the other qualifications like the American diploma, the French baccalaureate, 
contact me, we can go through them, we can work out what your qualifications are, maybe what you need to achieve to get a place. Also on this note as well, don't worry if you don't have your results now, it's perfectly normal to apply before you have your results. We'll make what's called a conditional offer. The condition will be, please get these results in your final qualification. So we'll work through that with you and we'll make sure that you're able to sort of apply for the program and understand the offer as well. Um, but just to recap, depending on what qualification you're studying and what score you get, you won't have to take a foundation. But like I said, contact me, we can work out what you're doing and what you may need to do. Um, so the next question, uh, can I get information about the permanent residency process after education? So great question, firstly, um, but it's also um, quite a complicated answer for you. The next question is very similar. Do international students have work permits after graduation in UK? So first things first, you're obviously both asking about after you graduated. But when you're studying, your visa will allow you to work for up to 20 hours per week. This is a perfect amount of time because it's enough time to earn good money so you can go out and have fun and support yourself, but also not too much time that you'll be tempted to work more than your degree will allow and you'll start getting in trouble with the university. So it works perfectly. After you've graduated, the UK now has this new visa called the post-study work visa. It may also be called the graduate route visa, depending on who you speak to or which government department you're speaking to. This allows you to stay in the country for two years and you can work any job. Um, you can work basically from McDonald's through to the top uh, world's most famous companies doing big, important things, whatever you want to do. But you've got two years to do this with them. At the end of the two years, if you want to stay in the UK, you'll have to get that company that you work for, or maybe another company that's offering you a job to sponsor you for a new visa. That's then where you can stay whilst you have that job, whilst you have that visa. To get residency permits, to a permanent residence permit, so we'll call this um, indefinite leave to remain, so you can live in the UK without needing a visa. You have to be in the UK for about six to seven years. I don't know if that two year visa after university um, is included in that seven years. I'm not a qualified immigration advisor, so it'd be worth speaking to someone about that if that's your goal. Um, but seven years is the time that you need to do. You'll get indefinite leave to remain and then you'll be allowed to apply for a passport and then you can stay forever once you've got the passport or the indefinite leave to remain, in fact. But like I said, you can work whilst you're studying up to 20 hours per week, and then you can stay for two years afterwards working any job. What you do after that is then up to you and if you can get sponsored for a new visa. Okay, the next question. Um, so obviously today I've been mainly sort of, I've been talking about quite generally goldsmiths and studying in London, but pointing a little bit more towards undergraduate programs. So the next question, um, is the GPA requirements very high for master's applications? Is it possible to get acceptance lower than the 3.0 GPA? Yes. So depending on what program you're applying for and which country your qualification comes from, sometimes the GPA entry requirement is 2.7 out of four. Um, what we do, you might see across a lot of our programs, that our entry requirements are a little bit lower than some other universities. This doesn't mean that our courses are worse or anything like this. What this means is we accept students from a wide range of backgrounds. We want to make sure everyone has the chance. We also think that how you perform on an exam is not necessarily everything that you can do and is not a best representation of who you are. So when you apply for a program with us, we do look at your academic uh, results. So we do set this academic entry requirement. But we also read your personal statement. And for some programs, we'll offer an interview. And we're trying to understand who you are as a person, what you've got to say about yourself, and if you fit what goldsmiths do. So like I said, depending on your qualification um, and what program you're applying for, some of our programs have a, an entry requirement of 2.7 out of four. You may see some that are three, but some are 2.7. Got any questions on this, please feel free to email me, tell me about what your qualifications are, and I'll go through this with you and we can work out what your, um, excuse me, what your routes and your options are. Uh, the next question, do you accept Duolingo? If we cannot reach language requirements, do you offer pre-sessional English? So I didn't actually talk about our English language requirements at all. Um, most of our programs at undergraduate level need an IELTS of 6.0 overall with 6.0 in writing and then nothing lower than 5.5 in the remaining components. At postgraduate level, it's usually 6.5 overall, 6.5 in writing, then nothing lower than 6.0 in the other components. Some are a bit higher, some are around those marks. 
depends what you're applying for. The information is on the course pages. But again, if you've got any questions, please email me and I can go through this with you. We do accept a wide range of other English language qualifications. So things like the TOEFL. Um, we also take the Pearson um, uh, exams that you can do, but there are also different qualifications. Some of you may already have a quali qualification from America or maybe a, another country where English is the first language. Um, those of you who are taking the IB or A-levels, like English A-level, we can accept those instead of IELTS. Duolingo, unfortunately, we cannot accept. Uh, we don't accept this program, um, so you will need to find another, another test. But on our website and also any university you're thinking of, there's always a search bar at the top of the website. Type in there, English language requirements, those three words, you'll find a complete list of everything that that, student, that university accepts um, alongside IELTS. So IELTS and every other qualification they accept for, for English tests. So go on the Goldsmiths website, type it in and you'll see the full list. If you've got any questions, obviously about anything, feel free to contact me and I can go through this with you. Uh, the next question, I think it may be our last one. Um, are the application deadlines flexible? So I said earlier, if you apply through UCAS, there's two deadlines. The first one is the 29th of January. The second one is the 30th of June. That 30th of June deadline is not flexible. If you apply after that, chances are gone. Um, we do have another system all, all UK universities use called clearing, which is where if we have any spaces available, we then advertise these you shouldn't rely on clearing as a first choice thing. It should be a backup plan. So don't wait for clearing to come around, apply now. You can use clearing as a backup if things go wrong or things go good. You can also change, like it's totally fine if things go good or bad, we can change later on. So that 30th of June deadline is not flexible, You've got to apply by them. The 29th of January deadline, that's for home and UK students, so all the people that are in the UK, however, I still recommend you apply by them. International students all around the world have already started applying now. You don't have to rush, you don't have to apply by next week, but I would still recommend applying by the 29th of January because people are already applying. We're able to make offers before that 29th of January deadline. So if you want a space and you want to be sure you've got a space, any university you're thinking of, I'd apply, I recommend applying before 29th of January. If you haven't, don't worry, there'll still be time. We can go through this with you that lots of applications come in between January and May. For your own um, stress levels, I would recommend applying definitely before May or June. The reason is, is if you're coming to join us in September 2022, in your summer, you're going to be thinking about accommodation, applying for a visa, sorting out your finances, seeing your friends for like one of the last times before you come back and visit later on, saying goodbye to your family, sorting everything out. It's one of the most stress, stressful experiences you'll have like up until this point in your life. So I recommend making sure you've applied early and you've got all the admission, all the administration stuff out the way before summer, because then you want your summer just to get things done and also enjoy your time. You'll spend your summer next year constantly emailing like, is my visa application okay? Have, is my accommodation okay? And we're super busy and we're trying to respond to all the emails saying, yes, everything's fine. But so many emails come in saying that. So it gets very difficult for us. It'll be very difficult for you. So the best thing to do is apply early, get your space, then think about the visa, think about your finances, just take these one at a time rather than have to do them all in one go. So the short answer to your question, are the applications deadlines flexible? Yes and no, but just apply early. Just get that sorted early. Okay, I think that's all the questions from the questions tab. I'm gonna have a quick look in the chat window because I think people were saying things there. Obviously, lots of people said hello. I did say hello at the start, but hi again, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for joining. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think I've covered all the questions. So I just wanna repeat, in that chat window, uh, the chat page, you can see my contact details. So there's my name, there's my email address, and there's my work mobile phone number. So if you're on WhatsApp, Telegram, iMessage, KakaoTalk, the, the WeChat, the Chinese one, any one of these, Feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to hear from you. Um, my name is Jake. The autocorrect on your phone or your email is going to try and change it to Jack. Don't worry. Everyone does it. But my name is Jake. If you fancy spelling it right, it's there. 
Um, obviously, below that, there's lots of um, links. So how to find courses on our website, writing a personal statement. There's information on scholarships, accommodation, and links to our YouTube. And then finally, um, at the bottom, um, there's a link to um, if you want any further information from Goldsmiths. If you want us to email information about the programs you're interested in, there's a form you can fill in. Um, so I'm going to wrap up here. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. It's been a joy presenting to you all. And I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you again. Yes, thank you very much for your great presentation, Jake. We believe it was a really informative webinar for the attendees and you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers too. Cool, thank you so much for having me. It's been a, it's been a joy to be here again. Also, I would like to thank the uh, participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Goldsmith University of London ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adresinden Jake'e ulaşabilirsiniz. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Hepinize iyi hafta sonları diliyoruz. Pazartesi günü yeni webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again, Jake. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.